Ian Royal tried to persuade us that the Porsche 911 was the car of the century. Well, I don't see how any show about the car of the century could be complete without at least some input from Marinello. So I've chosen this, the Dino. And if its puppy dog cute looks fail to move your heart, and I don't see how they could, then its story will certainly win you over. It's named after the great Enzo's son. Dino is short for Alfredo, and it could be argued that this, the baby Ferrari, had the biggest influence on one of the world's most famous sports car marks. Note the position. It's mid-engined, and this, when it was first launched at the end of the 60s, was the first car from Ferrari to have its power plant mounted amidships. In fact, with a very few exceptions, it wouldn't be until the end of the 90s and the 550 Maranello that any Ferrari driver would sit with the engine in front. Unless, of course, things went very badly wrong. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now that is a proper car interior. The Baby Dina was a contemporary of the big Ferrari Daytona, and on this particular model, this is a Daytona interior with the striped seats. It's exactly the same as in the bigger car, but an awful lot smaller. It was designed in here by Pininfarina, as was the exterior, and I reckon this inside is every bit as beautiful as the outside shape of the car. The original intention was that the Dino, badged Dino and not Ferrari, would begin a whole new range of more affordable sports cars from Maranello. In fact, when the car arrived, it was such a revelation. People adored it, and it in itself inspired a whole new range of mid-engine Ferrari supercars. Note that prancing horse Ferrari badges seen on surviving examples today are later additions. In fact, originally, due to its fairly minuscule 2.5 litre V6 as opposed to a V12 engine, Ferrari were not at all happy about having a prancing horse on it at all. Despite being nicknamed the Baby Ferrari, the Dino was at the time hardly a cheap car. It cost about £8,000 when a Daytona was admittedly twice that at £16,000. But you could buy a V12 Jaguar E-Type for just £4,000. It may not be the fastest, and it's certainly not the biggest, but the little tiny Dino can claim to have inspired several generations of exotic and flamboyant supercars ever since. Now, Ken Gibson wants to try and persuade us that the car of the century should be even smaller 